Hello everybody and welcome back to another deck guide. Today we're going to be taking a look at a deck that has existed in many different forms over the last couple of months. Um, that is Nature's Gift. And it seems like it's not too bad in the current meta. I know Square Tail has been a faction that kind of isn't really performing the greatest, but it still seems like it has some potential. Um, particularly has a good matchup against um, Nilfgaard, which is quite a good selling point, because right now Nilfgaard is kind of running running rampant on ladder and having a nice counter towards Nilfgaard. Pretty good. Um, so far, this deck has performed quite well for me against Nilfgaard. I think I've only lost one game against Nilfgaard. Other than that, I think pretty much every other game for me I've beaten Nilfgaard. So it does seem like it's performing relatively well, on that front at least. Um, but let's go through the deck and discuss what everything does. First up, we have Nature's Gift as a leader ability. <clears throat> so the lead leader ability is basically a built-in symbiosis, meaning every time you play a nature card, you will get a Wandering Train to spawn on the board. Um, that is basically a one-point token that will um if i can bring it up here um okay it doesn't show any of the cards basically just a one point trend token which will spawn every time you play a nature card and that trend category does also give you some value with your rebukes makes your rebukes much easier to um get that death blow value um also you can give two vitality to a unit three times and during the course of the game, this is especially useful on two things. One, the Hammer Dryads, as this does mean that the Hammer Dryads get extra value because Hammer Dryads also have Symbiosis on them, but also they have another ability is if at the end of the turn this card has Vitality, it'll boost itself by one as well. So when you have Vitality, it essentially gets double value on a Hammer Dryad, which is quite good. Um, so that is going to be synergizing there quite nicely. Then we have a Neuromancy. I'm sure you guys have seen this card many times before echo card play any card from your deck and this is also quite valuable because it does give potentially two spell or two special triggers onto the gourd make, making the gourd plus two which is quite nice there um then we have forest play, play a bronze nature card from your graveyard um self-explanatory just replay a bronze card very flexible very strong very very strong card in this deck probably the strongest card in this deck actually even very very valuable then we have heat pip and this is obviously helps a lot against decks like nilf god helps a lot against maybe all the siege decks running around um or just anything in general it can be a tall punish can be quite flexible banish a unit or artifacts just delete something off the board if you don't like something you can just completely send it into the nether realms with this um and for obvious reasons that's quite valuable in some matchups um, very good against, for example, North God against Mars Great Ball because you can obviously banish away the Mars Great Ball. Then we have Avalach. Now, why Avalach, you might ask? Well, there's two reasons. Maybe three. Um, one is an elf, which means he synergizes with a Singham's Council. Two, he um, also is going to be a unit that plays a special, meaning he kind of bypasses that unit limit in the, or that special limit in the deck. So you can play Avalach and... I have another another unit that spawns a special to make Gort even stronger, and he obviously has some amount of value where you can use him to try set up removal on other things. Um, just a good value play, basically playing the twelve for ten that also gives you plus one on Gort, so kind of a thirteen for ten, and then also can you know just be used in combination with other removal to kill off some stuff. Then we have a Shaping Nature. So another Echo card. And again, Echo quite valuable because it gives extra value to Gord because you can play this potentially twice and therefore give two plus two points to Gord. So choose one of the following. Veil, boost by six, boost an ally by eight, or give an ally unit five boost plus five vitality. Now in pure value wise, the boost by five and five vitality is going to be the most. You have to be careful because if you try go super greedy on a Hammer Dryad, it's very bad against Tall Punish, it's very bad against Poison. So you've got to try use this you know, when you have a good moment to do so, if your opponent poisons something and you don't have a purify, you could always give it a veil and then they can't poison it again. Or you could just go for pure value and boost by eight. That's also fine. Um, it's a nature card as well. So all these options are going to get at least plus one because of your leader ability, sometimes plus two, depending on how many nature uh, symbiosis you have. And just a nice little flexible echo card, good value and synergizes quite nice with hammer drives potentially. Elias, destroy the allied unit then spawn two elven dead eyes on this road. Now, another target that can be pulled off the Singham's Council potentially. Um, Elias will allow you to sometimes be able to play Council into the Elias and then the Council is a nature card so the Council will spawn a Wandering Trent and then you can get the Elias immediately on an open board stage just kill that Wandering Trent and you can play Council for quite a few points with Elias um, right away without any setup required. Otherwise of course with all the Wandering Trent spawning Elias should play for some good value in this deck. Then we have Becker's Rock Slide. Now, Becker's Rock Slide, I forgot to mention what Singham's Council does. Council will let you look at a, a random dwarf, elf, or dryad in this deck. Now, um, 
for that reason, sometimes the pirate mission is a little bit awkward because the anti synergy it has sometimes with uh, Gord. But basically, this card will be able to find you either Elias, Avalach, or the Sorceresses in the Elf slot. In the Dryad slot, it can find either Dunker, Falv, or Hammer Dryad. And the Dwarf slot will either find. Dwarf slot is relatively consistent because only Pyrotech and, and Gord in that slot. But yeah, just a nice little um, nature card that gives you some. You know, some some tutor ability on some of your cards. Then we have the Rock Slide. Damage aiming by 8. Simple as that. Just some more removal, but more higher end removal. You can do up to 8 damage. So, quite valuable there. Then, Five play a nature card from your deck. Now, obviously, this deck does play with a few nature cards. So, Five can tutor any number of them. Um, just a good value card as well with some tutor ability. Then we have Dunker. It is going to be Veil, Zeal, Order, Damage Enemy by 3. At the end of your turn, if Order has not yet been used, then boost a Scoia'tael unit to your hand by 1. So basically playing as a form of carryover. And also you can combine this 3 damage or some, with Rebuke or whatever to kill something else off on the board if you need to. Gord boost self by 0. Increase the boost by 1 for every special card you played this game. Obviously there are a lot of special cards in this deck. So this Gord can go 16, 17, sometimes 18 plus points. Can be very, very big in situations. A very nice finisher for this deck. Then we have Doro Garay, and um, this is going to be to just lock a unit. Now you might be asking why not play um, the other Scoia'tael lock such as the Moran or maybe even the Kirin. Well basically Doro Garay is a bigger body and movement really not that relevant right now. You don't need to lock and move something only if there's a lot of Kelly on ladder then that becomes valuable. Um, otherwise not on Devotion decks so Doro Garay. I mean you could play if you want to. You could play these if you want to. You could even play Ida if you're worried about defenders. You can always cut Doro Garay for an Ida if you want. Um, lots of things you could run here in this place, but I'm going to dog away for now, but of course you might feel differently. I must say the Purify can be valuable, especially if you see a lot of cloggers on that and you might be able to want to Purify a Defender. So Ida is definitely, I think, one that I would like to put in this deck. I'm just not 100% sure how, what I would have to cut to put it and fit in. Then we play one of Soak of Life, damage aim by three, then boost a random Scoia'tael unit in your hand by two. If you get the Death Blow, you can choose the unit instead. Um, so another form of carrier, another nature card, and just some good value in this deck. Um, especially if you boost up a dull blood on a sorceress, that can be quite valuable. Hammer Drive we've already discussed, then moving on to the sorceress. This card is something that I actually underrated when I initially re reviewed the cards. I thought this card was going to be a lot worse, but it's actually not too bad. Order, create, and play a bronze square tail special with the provision cost equal to a low in this card's power. Now, um, there aren't that many square tail nature cards in the in the, uh, in the game, so or special cards rather, so... It's it's relatively consistent in terms of what the card pool is. Um, but yeah, there's some great options here. This card is essentially like a little mini forest protector in a way. If it survives, it's basically a forest protector and pretty good value. I mean, if your opponent locks, you can always purify it. You play caresses anyway. Um, you have plenty of ways to boost it up to try to keep it out of removal range. It's actually a card that's pretty damn good in this deck and the card art is absolutely superb, so. Bonus points there. Um, <clears throat> then we have a Spores. Now this you can obviously cut for something else. I kind of want to Spores just have another Toll Punish. Um, so reset the unit's power. You don't have to have this card. Sometimes it's not so great. It's just a tech card. It's something you often going to mulligan away. And every now and then this card is going to be insane. Um, but often it is just mulligan fodder. Then we have a Dryad's Caress. Purify an allied unit and boost it by three. If you control a Dryad, also give it Vitality for three turns. There are a lot of Dryads in this deck, so it should be quite valuable being able to purify um, bleeds or poisons or whatnot can be quite useful. Or just play for good value on a Hammer Dryad if you wanted to. Um, then there is going to be Tempering. Boost an allied unit by five. If it's a Dwarf, also give it two armor. Just another Nature card. Plays for six points. Sometimes more if you have more Symbiosis. Pirate's Condition, damage enemy by 4 and boost self, uh, and also damage self by 4. It has 2 armor, so it's essentially going to be a 6-point card. If you want to combine it with the Tempering, then it becomes an 8-point card, technically. And, um, yeah, just another good value card in this deck. For some nice proactivity as well. You can play this card, turn 1, and then it kind of stops your opponent from opening up with any, like, real engines. If they play a 4-point four four engine, then this card can just kill it immediately. So it can be quite nice at controlling the board state. Then we have a Cat Witcher. And this card is basically going to be, um, it's going to be given enemy units bleeding for, bleeding with duration equal to the number of units on that unit's row. Range row, the exact opposite, you can give an allied unit vitality for duration of equal to however many units on that row. Obviously, vitality getting some good value with hammer drives. So, anyway, that is the deck. Um, like I said, this deck is going to be uh, somewhat of a control heavy deck. It's good against Nilfgaard. It has some other good matchups too. Basically, this deck often wants to win round one, bleed round two. Because of this leader ability and this deck type, it's very good at playing to three different rounds. You know, 
winning round one, pushing round two, making round three very short with the likes of Gord as a finisher. Um, that's typically going to be this deck's game plan. And um, yeah, let's jump into a few games now and see how we can do. Right, there was no Koshi. I mean, that would be very weird, right? Playing a koshi less Koshi deck. But I mean, I suppose it's possible. Cute Whispers. They're just going to die most times. I, I don't think this card is surviving. I mean, maybe as a one-off, I suppose you could try, but I don't know. Um, probably mulligan away one of these and probably mulligan away this. And then... Uh, the rest doesn't look bad, but I'd really like to have a Neuromancy in hand. I suppose I have both elves. Maybe I'm mulligan away this uh, syndrome or something. Spit it out already. I don't have all day. Okay. address and how you address them that is a problem Ugh. Now I can't answer Siege. That's really annoying. But I have to answer, otherwise he's going to play things like Baltus, he's going to play things like Dandelion, and it's going to be a big problem if I don't answer it. Ah, damn. I had a good little defenders. Yeah, I don't mind. Okay, but my audio today is completely fucked. I think I completely screwed up my PC yesterday with these drivers. I should play this first, but yeah. I was if, if I didn't get an answer for this, then I wouldn't. I wanted to play rebuke. Yeah, but maybe it was better to just play this first, and very high chance I'll get something to answer it. Yeah, I mean, the siege was going to bleed out now, that's the thing. Press those burning. I guess we soak of life that next turn. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> Fine. Okay. I could be your great grandfather's great grandfather. This guy's really smoking this round. Stick now, right? Because you get comp you can get compression right now, which is a good yeah. So he goes for the compression, miss compression. Oh my god! I actually found the compression. Strength matters not if you lack the skill to wield it. All right, so I guess we do that, and then. Weird. All right, so we win round one. I don't like spending the heat wave, but we're gonna try to bleed out the um, siege anyway. But yeah, I don't like having to have spent the heat wave. It feels kind of bad because now I have to bleed.
There's no, there's no square top cards in this hand. That's kind of funny. Though trees live longer than humans, they need protection from them. So if you play season, I'm just passing it, right? What's my lock gonna be? Could be that, theoretically, but... There are other things that may also be quite... A lot better to lock, so I think I'm gonna let that through. Oh, shit, I actually wanted um, Elias there. Ugh, stop gurgling like that! Hmm. I mean, this can also be okay, I guess. One way or another, we're gonna keep bleeding until we see that siege. Okay, there it is, I'm out. Hello. Living souls in the week should ne'er do you forget your seek. So... Round three... What do we want? We want this, we want this, and we want this. Very important cards to find. No. Yes. Kind of. Good, okay. Um... I guess we hold this. And then, if we don't need to, if we need to get the other lock down. Next turn has to be next turn. And this is something so threatening that I have to use my removal on it. Okay, that's not very threatening, but. There's a problem with that, though. The problem with that, it moves rows. Hmm. I guess other lock can come down next turn, hopefully. Okay, I can grab a lock here and then lock this. Appearances can be deceiving. Question is, do I need to lock this? I mean, ah, there might be better things to lock. Be glad to. Of the shore, bows raised. Mankind is a virus, a plague. Okay. So what could we be looking at? Maybe Varaxis and Seis getting rock slid. You think I'm out of removal? You are wrong, sir. One day I'll return, but you'll not live to greet me. Did you see that? The city is to be dead now. Rocks. Killer spell. Yeah. Okay, so Flurry. Um Power, the object of dark yeah. desire. Hmm. 
greater than playable? Of course it's playable. I mean, might not be the best faction, but it's definitely playable. I mean, there's no faction that's unplayable. It's been a long time since we've had a meta where there's a faction that's been actually literally unplayable. Go ahead. Stare at me stump again, see what happens. Let their blood break their bones and spirit! The only good dwarf is a dead dwarf. Okay. <laughs> and eight two nine. Thanks, Hannah Bridge. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. What's he doing here? He's discarding. Okay. Don't you pester me. Let's not get in the way of me axe. So I guess we just play this then. I could drown you in a single draw. Megascope. Megascope is cheating, Mr. Opponent. Not allowed. Tis my tree. I was born with it. I shall die with it. Getting a mega scope. Mankind is a virus, a plague. Two arms, men. Are we hunting? Two arms. All right, so in round one, what do we get out of him? We got out. Kadoosh, and we got out. Uh, not really much, actually. Um, just Kadoosh, really. I mean, he didn't get much out of me either, I suppose. We got some carryover going, which is good. The question is, do I want to bleed this deck? Do I want a long round? Honestly, I don't know. I actually might want a long round. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go long round, honestly. Yeah, I know I want last save, but I can... Being doesn't mean I'm gonna go card down necessarily, but yeah, I guess there's a risk. More fog on the drive pass. That's interesting. That is a little bit interesting. Okay, gold is good. False just okay. Um, you can probably go. Five is great. So I guess we can Anira this and counsel that or something. Good. Okay. Talk to strangers. Okay. Reason why I rang Eth in this deck, because it's not a devotion deck. Uh, I suppose. And the end. Oh, uh, it has to go, but I don't make it go easily. I want to heat back yourself, I can't do that. Mm, I can't let that survive, it's too many points. Mm. 
Hmm. It's too many points to ignore. I was lopped off three heads with one blow. I mean, he's already played the Mega Scope, so this isn't that bad anymore. I don't Spit mind this too we much. Probably gonna use a leader charge and kill this, though. I would expect, but then he has to at least overshoot the damage, most likely. I think. Oh, this place do not. You never know which contract's gonna kill you. Okay. All that dancing around. It's not for me. And then we go probably Frostica next. Consider it done. I guess I should go this for now. Axie. Pretty weak Axie. You know, on a feet. The only good human is a dead human. That is actually a really weak axiom. Clearly, I have a weak So, forest protectors, a lot of points. Gord is a lot of points. So be it. This is pretty close, though, I think. Last card of his is probably a heat wave, right? I would expect. I think we've only plays for nine, which we beat. Harder! Harder! Oh. Yama is more than heat wave. We still win very close, though. Eh, not that. Ah, eh, it's close. Used to chop wood, but the piece better for souls. He doesn't grave, are you discarded? Huh. Interesting. Um Okay, Nilfgaard again. So far we haven't lost to Nilfgaard yet. Is not a virtue I am known to have. We tied to Nilfgaard once, we never lost to it yet. Is this a clog? We did play against a guy earlier playing Magic Lamp. I don't know if it's the same person, but it could be Clog. If it's Clog, I almost don't want to mulligan that, but I guess I'm just gonna discard my hand and run one if it is Clog. I suppose. Okay, Neuromance is really big. Okay, that shouldn't mean... That should be not plug. Eh. Can you double proc this? There are ways you can double proc this. Probably won't get double proc, but I'm gonna rather be safe than sorry. Let's take the rebuke. No, yeah! Yeah! <laughs> um, killing a second one is going to be a bit difficult. I mean, I can go Council into Farve into Rebuke, I guess. That guarantees we'll kill it. Uh, Ku's coming down on that then. I'm probably gonna play a Vincent here then, but I prefer this not to get killed by a Ku. Feeling a bit peckish. Though trees live longer than humans, they need protection from them. Mm. I 
is closed, mouth open. Spit it out already. I don't have all day. Uh, circle of light. Oh, I need to rebuke. I need the points. I need the points. And then. Let's just do this. Actually, do I need the points? Extra, that was worth. Yeah, it was. I need the points. Alright, so. We win round one. What do we get out of him? We got our cup bearer. That's about it. Just got our cup bearer. Alright, so round two. We have that. I guess I'm going away you. Pull it with cancel. And then possibly mulligan away. Ah, the rest of the hand is nice. Kind of. Ah, there are better things though, but I mean. Sure. That's the first scenario, so that's nice. Start with that, leave it as is, and then we maybe go cancel into Elias next turn. Gotta be careful about Vincent, that's for sure. Can purify Joachim, he doesn't end up kuda grassing it. Ah, I guess I forgot about the symbiosis of circle. Circle actually pays for a bit more. Yeah, I guess circle would have actually done it. Never mind. There we go. No one can hide from me. Do people know how to play this this deck? Do people actually just? What if I told you guys? Okay, secretly, right? You can play these cards without having to high roll. Crazy, crazy, right? Actually, crazy. Love is war. For the daisy of the valley. Ay, ay, ay. True love could lift the curse, but who would love such a curse? Like, there's so many options that are terrible with this Cantarella as well. It's crazy. It's actually a ton that you just don't want. Our world is in harmony. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, yeah, so we play Avalach here, and then we go for, I guess, Frost, Fog, whatever, doesn't really matter, I guess. And then we go for, I don't know, whatever. Maybe near into Valve. I mean, this game should be over. This Cantarella pull was so bad for him. Oh, coup de grasse. Maybe I should need to charge and to play around this, I guess. Um, so Falv in... You will see it. Is it Falv? In your dream. Be Falv. <laughs> okay.
Um, I mean, he has to go usurp, he had to do it, but it's fine. Question what the last card is, because I could have potentially to it, but I'm not the last card is. So we have Heat Wave for the ball. We have Forest Protect and we have Gord. Double final sin. By the breaking, well, it means a card that plays for like zero point. Well, it doesn't get its full ability through because it's not in a situation. He hasn't played Yoakim yet, has he? Um... Mmm, that's kind of bad. My, my, the Van Morlands, they truly spoil us. Maybe it's fine. If he doesn't have thingy, then it doesn't actually matter, I guess. I'm guessing he doesn't have his ball if he's playing. I mean, he played Roderick in round two, so I guess his consistency goes a, bit out the, a little bit out there. But I would imagine he would stop the ball if he had ball. No good wine will come from here. Not even compost. It's gonna get locked, but whatever. Where's your Joachim? So his last card is Ku, right? Our gourd should be cool. Oh, just in there. Oh, I think I've double final Sam. Crazy. Going crazy. Um. Okay. I don't understand what that Cantarilla was. That Cantarilla was game losing for him. Anyway, that's deck guide. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions about this deck. And I'll be more than happy to try answer some of them. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the deck. And I'll see you guys again on the next one. Bye-bye.